close your eyes and begin to bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus' name we pray. Almighty Father, these are your peculiar people. Your special people. You want them to be blessed. You want them to know you are happy with them. And that's why you said we should highlight here and salute them for you. Amen. Divine, I'm requesting that in these two days, these people shall rejoice as the city in Samaria. Amen. Many people's names shall enter the book of life. Many shall be washed from their sins. Amen. Many people's eyes shall open. Amen. The captives of the devil shall be loosed. Amen. There shall be joy and gladness in their life. Amen. Because of Jesus. Amen. I love you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. You can be seated. That's wonderful to be here to strengthen you in the law, to encourage you, raise you, give you hope, give you love, give you the word from the Lord. I am talking to you on we are a peculiar people to God. We are a peculiar people to God. Like the children of Israel, the Lord is looking to us as a peculiar people. In Exodus chapter 19, I read from verse 3 to verse 6, or rather let's read to verse 8. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shalt thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians. And how I bear you on eagles' wings and brought you unto myself. Now, therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my, my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. 
And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all these words which the Lord commanded him. Verse 8. Everybody want to go. And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord had spoken, we will do. And Moses returned the weights of the people unto the Lord. Amen. The Lord was speaking to the children of Israel. He said, You saw how I came to Egypt and walked hard there to bring you out of Egypt to myself. To myself. I walked hard in Egypt. I walked against the Egyptians to bring you to myself. And now I really, really mean to establish you a peculiar people unto me. A special people unto me. That is my plan. Go and tell them. All I want them to do is to obey my word. To keep my word and do them. Then I will give them special attention. I will make them my special people. They shall be children of my bosom. I'm going to give them opportunity to serve me. I will be glad at their service. I will be happy with them. They will be to me a kingdom of priests and I'm going to honor them specially in this life in this world the message goes to you how the Lord labored over your life in Egypt when you were in Egypt under the bondage of Satan the bondage of evil men. The bondage of evil women. God labored over you. He labored. One pastor was telling me how the Lord labored over him. I think in Lafayette here when he was walking as a civil servant. He was a drunkard. And a particular servant of God was always looking for him. He preached to him and asked him to give his life to Christ. For shame of him, he accepted. He gave his life to Christ. But he didn't mean it. Alcohol was his delight. Any time he saw the man coming, he would have to go into hiding and wait for the man to pass before he would return to his alcohol. But then, this man continued. Sometimes the man would locate him where he was hiding. I say, give your life to Christ. Yeah. The Lord will change you. The Lord will make use of you. The Lord will bless your life. He will agree. Kai, this man is disturbing me. He will hide. The man continued pursuing him. Continue until one time he says, too much. Okay, yes, I've agreed. And truly prayed 
and received genuine conversion. It was the man that persisted on him that brought him out of the bondage of alcohol. So the Lord is saying, I went to Egypt and I labored for you to bring you out of the bondage of immorality. It was not easy. It was not easy. Even when you say you have come out, you fell again. You fell again. You fell again. Until you even became pregnant. I never left you. I kept pursuing. Until now, you have come out of Egypt. You saw what I did to sinners because of you. Just because I would get you. Because of you. I brought you to myself. As for you. You were chief. In the kingdom of occultism. And the Lord labored. He labored. He labored over you to get you. He labored over you to get you. You know the labor. To the point you got sick. And then you knew that this power could not help. It's then you say, God, where are you? My power will not work. It cannot work again. I need you now. And that's how he got you. Until you destroy this idol worship. You destroy these charms. You break you broke relationship with evil people. Now you have come out. So in various ways, God labored over you in the family. In your family, he labored. Now, he said, you should be told that if you will obey his voice, indeed, and keep his covenant, his agreement, to keep his word, to move in his way, he said you will be a peculiar treasure a special people to himself he is going to make you special he will put upon you the cloth of many colors just as Jacob did to Joseph whom he loved the Lord said he will love you. He will care for you. He will keep you. If you can make up your mind, make this promise, I will, I will serve the Lord. I will be his own. I will keep his ways. I will go with him. I will be with him. If you say so, Let's watch your life. You are coming out. You are rising up. God will cause the rain to fall on your life. God will cause the sun to shine over your life. God will give his angels to watch over you. They shall fight your battles for you. I'm telling you. Just agree to serve the Lord. Agree. As for you, he worked hard to bring you here. He worked very hard. God labored to bring you here. Why did he bring you here? You have actually never heard his true word. You have not heard his true word. I want to tell you how costly this word of God is. It's not cheap. It's not these things that you see going on in many churches. It's not the world. It doesn't serve people. In 2000, 
15, we were going to South Africa. We arrived South Africa. The Lord said, thank you, my son, for bringing me to South Africa. It shocks me. What? You mean you have not been here? No. What about the preaching going on in the churches? Is that the word of God? The Bible says, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you, it is then I am with you. But what? When the word of God is not there, is he there? He is not there. He is there as he is in the forest. Because he is God that occupies the universe. But not there with peculiar delight. Not there in special interest. Because his word is not preached. His word is not known. And the people are not practicing his salvation. They are not practicing his righteousness. So he is not there properly dressed as though occasion of worship is going on on his name. No. Therefore, he labored to bring you to where you will hear it in clear terms. That's where you're here. That's where you came. God has to help you to agree to come. He helped you. Now, having brought you now, he is saying, if you will hear this word, and accept me and agree to walk in my ways to follow my word to obey my word you will watch your life you will see what I shall do for you I'm going to take away every sin from your life I'm going to sprinkle clean water over your life I am going to wash every death out of your life. Amen. And I am going to give you a new heart. Amen. The heart that loves Jesus. Amen. The heart that loves the word of God. Amen. The heart that will obey the word of God. Amen. And I'm going to put my spirit inside you. Amen. I will make it easy for you to obey me. Amen. That's what the Lord is saying. Yours is make up your mind. I say, Lord, I will obey. Lord, I will follow you. Now, I was with some people in the rice farm. It's church rice farm in Abuja. Around the campground. Grass overgrew, overgrew the rice. And you couldn't see the rice. But you'll be seeing grass. Yes. Then God brought to my memory. Do you see this right? Can you see them? No, you can't see them. I was talking to the people. See, you can't see this right. But when you weed out the sin that is in this rice, what will happen? You will see the rice. The grass that covers the rice is the sin that covers your life. Is the same. When people stand, when God stands, he cannot see you. He just sees sin. Oh, that I snap that rice. I should have shown you a practical picture of what I am saying. You will not see. In fact, they are finishing one portion today to move to another portion. If you can pay your transport money and go to Abuja now. <laughs> <laughs> Praise the Lord. <laughs> yes. You will well see the reality of what I'm saying. So, now, when they weeded the rice, I saw rice standing now. I said, these are end time evangelists. I said, they should go and buy fertilizer and fertilize them. Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost will be falling upon the rice. That is fertilizer. Then give the fertilizer one week. What will you see? Give the rice one week. What will you see? 
heavy rise, dark, growing up with promise. God wants to do like that in your life. He will weed all the sins that are in your life. He will remove them from your heart. He will remove them from your eyes. He will remove them from your nose. He will remove them from your mouth. He will remove them from your mind. He will remove them from your hands. He will remove them from your leg. All these sins that the members of your body commit, he will remove all of them and now you, you will appear. You will appear fine. It's then he will pour the Holy Ghost upon your life. I said, this is end time evangelist. This is one of the end time preachers that will do exploit for God. You are welcome. Amen. Tell them, please tell them he's welcome. Tell her. Yes, you're welcome. God means to do something. <laughs> yes, he means to do something. He will do something in your life. Peculiar people. Ha, this is wonderful. He said, ye have seen what I did in Egypt. Ah, the Lord has been speaking. He said, churches have disappointed me. Denominations have disappointed me. He said, my eyes are on holiness, revival, movement, Worldwide. Ah, what for is the same thing. It's because we have decided to stand to his word. We are preaching his word. We are practicing his word. We suffer persecution in his word. We have not run away. We are still standing on the world. And we have not allowed grass to overgrow us. Holiness movement has been there from 2009, of course. We came up alive. We have not allowed grass to grow, to cover us. Never. Righteousness is what we know. We hold righteousness. As Job said, I take, took righteousness and clothed me. That is what we have done. We are sincere in serving the Lord. Every, our books are books of righteousness. Our tapes are tapes of righteousness. Our conferences are conferences of righteousness. All we do, prayer meetings, all are prayer meetings of righteousness. Thy throne, O Lord, is forever and ever. The scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter. Thy throne, thy throne O Lord is forever and ever the scepter of thy kingdom is a right scepter thou lovest Righteousness, righteousness, and hatest wickedness. Hallelujah. Therefore, oh, thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above that fellows therefore Lord thy God has anointed thee with the oil of 
gladness I will die fellows. It is not by chance that we came into this position with God. It is not good luck to us. It is our righteousness. We behaved ourselves different from other congregations. We hold to righteousness. We hold to holiness. Therefore, the Lord thy God, the Lord our God, has exalted us. Is giving us chance, giving us opportunity, giving us grace, giving us divine presence above many congregations. It's righteousness. It's righteousness. It is righteousness. That's why I am telling you this. In the book of First Peter, chapter 2, verse 9. First Peter chapter 2 verse 9 to verse 12. Let's read from verse 7. Unto you who, who, therefore which believe he is precious but unto them which be disobedient the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made the head of the corner. The head of the corner. Now, the Jews disbelieved Jesus in all his claims as the Messiah, in his claim as the Savior, in his claim as the Son of God, in his claim as the everlasting God himself, they disbelieved him. They disbelieved him. But some believed. Some among them believed. The Gentiles, many believed. Now, the word of God tells us, unto you therefore which believe, he is precious. Very precious. Darling Jesus, how I love you. Oh, how I love Jesus. Jesus is the sweetest name I know. Precious Jesus is because we believe. What do we believe? That he is the son of God. Made a man on earth but came from heaven. God became man. He is the eternal God. The everlasting father. The mighty God. We believe he is the savior from sin. And that is how we are saved. Our sins are gone. We believe Jesus. He is the power of salvation. We believe he conquered the devil. That's why we conquer Satan. Satan has nothing to do with us. Yes. But then, what about those who don't believe? They are wasting their time because they say the sun is in the sky. You say, I don't believe. Ah. You don't believe. What? You enter the room and say, I, I've not seen any sun in the sky. I'm, I've, look, I've looked now, I'm not seeing sun. Will you remain in that room? The sun is shining outside. Any day you come out of that room, you will see the sun. It's you that hit yourself away from the sun. So, how will you not believe in Jesus? You're wasting time. The Jews are wasting their time because they will come to know surely Jesus is the Lord. They will come to know surely what? Jesus is the Lord. 
He is the Savior. They will come to know. So they are wasting time. But we who have believed, what a joy. He, he is wonderful unto us. Wonderful. He is a stone. Jesus, therefore, is a stone of stumbling and a, a rock of offense to them. Which stumble at the world, being disobedient, whereunto also they were appointed. They refused Jesus, so they are stumbling. We were in Israel, in Jerusalem. We saw them in the wailing wall as they gathered there. We went there on Saturday because we. We have holiness revival movement in Israel. I'm sure you are aware of that. So we went to visit the movement there. So we saw them in the wailing wall there. They were quoting scriptures. They were doing this. We wanted to snap them and say, no, no, don't do it, don't do it. Because it was a Sabbath day. How will you be walking? To snap somebody on a Sabbath day, you're offending God. It's work. That thing you press, chakra, it's work. And they're waiting for the Messiah. That same Jesus is the Messiah they're waiting for. Amen? Amen. He is the Messiah. But what about we who have believed? But ye are a chosen generation because you have believed Jesus. You have accepted him. You have welcomed him. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal, a, a, a royal priesthood. You are kingly. You are king and priest. That's what it's called, royal. Royal is kingly. Prince, king, priest, servants. So you are king and you are servants. King, Jesus made you both king and priest. Yes, we are because we believe. We are because we believe. Now, Everybody said, because, because we believe. When the Lord wanted to do reviving work on the earth, in his own predetermined counsel, he began to do something that was uncommon by giving revelation messages to people, by giving experience spiritual, divine experience to people. In fact, through death experience, he would take people to hell to see the horrors of hell. He would take people to heaven to see the beauty of heaven and send them back to the earth <clears throat> to come and tell mankind that this hell you think does not exist that makes you commit sin the way you want harden your heart the way you want see somebody who came from there and so it see somebody who came from there and was burnt by the fire of hell but God brought the person out again now you would think heaven doesn't exist they have deceived you. See this one. He went and saw heaven with his eyes, with the eyes, and saw the mansions and the beauty of heaven and angels, and the Lord sent him back to the earth so that we should believe. We believed. Others refused to believe. We believe that this thing is of God. Others say, they will not believe. Ah, you will not believe? That's left to you. But we have believed. And it has brought revival among us. We have believed. 
and is working great wonders and the presence of God is mighty among us because we believe him he has made us clean we have his fear in our lives because we don't want to go to the hell we had off we don't want to go to hell we want to go to heaven how many of you want to go to heaven uh -uh. praise the lord may the lord give you heaven because we believe it's not contrary to the word of god the revelations are not contrary they agree with the word of god they confirm the word of god the word of god confirmed them and we have believed and in this way the lord has given us attention his presence is with us we are going very fast can you point to somebody that the lord has used to go to hell and go to heaven point there let me see yes you are pointing you are pointing to somebody you are, you are pointing to somebody can you see devil is very angry because the testimony of such people is very powerful they make people repent in dust and ashes hmm. let me tell you you know we have been saying that holiness movement had gone to 40 countries in the world i think about two weeks or not up to that one of the coordinators said uh we have been saying that for for too long now the movement has gone beyond that he said he took it practically to check up how many place nations holiness revival movement has gone to both physically and online he said we have entered 70 countries in the world amen, amen. why are we flying we believe Everybody say we believe. believe. That's why we are flying. Why are repentance, the sanctification, cleansing, multiplying holiness movement? Is there any church who find restitution as holiness movement? Never. Why we believe that God speaks? We believe. So because we believe, we are now a peculiar people. A special people the Lord is giving us attention and has put the end time revival in our hands he said children I am looking to you people these people have felt me these people have disappointed me they disbelieve me the works of my hands they disbelieve but you have believed I am a stumbling to them. These revelations are a stumbling to them. But because you believe, I open myself to you. Hallelujah. Amen. Then I notice something the scripture says. For unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom. But unto them it is not given. That is the whole thing. They fight it. Who told you? We know the Bible. You know the Bible, but you don't know revelations. Because God didn't give you. He gave it to us. Why did God not give you? You were not worthy for it. When he made a revelation, you rejected it. And quenched it. Quenched the spirit. So the spirit left you. But when he came to us, we accepted it. And then he rests upon us. Amen? Amen. So, this work now has come to our hands. Revival of the world. Revival of, the, of Christianity. Through the doctrines of righteousness. Do we believe revelations only? No. We believe the doctrines of righteousness. In fact, it makes us understand it better. Amen? Yeah. 
When you were imagining a particular person and you were drawing, maybe as an artist, you were drawing that person, you were using the imagination of your mind. Then you came out and saw the person and said, ah, okay, okay, this is it. You are going to change some things in your drawing. Is that not so? Because you were hearing with the hearing of the ear, but now your eyes see and you are better. You understand better. So revelations make us understand the scriptures better. For example, many of course know that using hearing is a bad thing, but some, just very few some, but the conviction is not deep. Because they do not have the scriptures. They do not understand the scriptures. And if somebody argues with them, their power gets lost. But we know both scriptures and revelations. That people are in hell now for just hearing. Our conviction is strong. We understand portions of scriptures better. Why? Because we have seen that people are in hell just for hear, hearing. And those members of holiness movement who believe these revelations will never wear hearing. Because they know to do so is to go to hell. While others are saying, no, it doesn't mean anything. I, see me, I will speak in tongues. La, 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 la. He said, after you finish speaking, wait for hellfire. <laughs> With hearing in your ears. But as for me, I will remove it. Because I know. The Lord showed clearly in the revelation. If you are misinterpreting the scripture, revelation came also. That those who use hearing, who use palming, who use attachment, who use wevon, who paint their face, where are they? Yeah. And by this revelation, we get people converted in mass. The Lord is happy with us. He that winneth souls is, and Jesus is a master soul winner. Therefore, in his wisdom to get more souls fast in this end time, he applied this method. Look at it in the book of Ezekiel chapter 40. Ezekiel chapter 40 from verse 1 to verse 4. The Bible tells us the wisdom of God here. It says, Ezekiel 14 verse 1. In the, in the five and twentieth year of our captivity, in the beginning of the year, in the tenth day of the month, in the fourteenth year, after that the city was smitten, in the self same day, the hand of the Lord was upon me and brought me thither. In the visions of God brought he me into the land of Israel and set me upon a very high mountain by which was the frame of a city on the south. And he brought me thither. And behold, there was a man whose appearance was like the appearance of brass with a line of flax in his hand. And a measuring reed, and he stood in the gate. Verse 4, everybody want to go. And the man said unto me, Son of man, behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears, and set thine heart upon all that I shall show thee. For to the intent that I might show them unto thee, art thou brought hither, declare all that thou seest to the house of Israel. Huh. Can you see the wisdom of God? He brought Ezekiel in a revelation to the land of Israel 
and cause someone to describe some things for him to cause his people to repent to cause his people to know his ways and understand him better and then he said son of man there was a reason why I brought you here what was the reason the reason was that you will come and see the things I'm showing you. You will come and hear the things I am saying. The things that are going on here. So now hear them very well. See them and take the lesson clear. Because I'm sending you back to the people. When you go, declare all that you have seen and heard. Then why do you challenge God who took people through death experience to hellfire and said I brought you here to see people in hell and what brought them into hell I brought you here to see the things I condemn which my people don't understand them clearly in my world or which my people are playing over them see it very well I am going to wake you up. You won't, you, I will not leave you here in, in debt. I will send you back to the world. When you go, declare to the people what you have seen and what you have heard. Is this scriptural? Yes. Scriptural. Then you say, but Lazarus, when he died and woke up again, he rose back, he didn't come with a message. God didn't choose Lazarus for it. He has his choice. It's not everybody. We are, all have different gifts. There are diversities of gifts by the same spirit. So you can't say, must everybody come with a message? Everybody has his own reason. What was the reason why Lazarus came back? To glorify Jesus. That's all. And in his day, the people glorified Jesus. He has accomplished the reason of coming back to life. Because the Bible says many believed on him because of Lazarus. That was the reason why he came back to life. But somebody else, the Lord may have another reason why he, I brought him back. Two, why should Lazarus come with a message? To give to who? The message is alive on earth. God, who is Jesus, is alive on earth. Who again is greater than him in the region, in the realm of the dead? Is there any other person greater than God? No. When the sun is shining, do you use touch light? Uh -uh. Jesus is shining in the world. In the beginning was the world. The world was with God and the world was God and the world was on earth. The world became man. And now you say they should give him message. When the bridegroom is with the bride chambers, they do not fast. It's when the bridegroom is taken away from them. It's then they shall fast in those days. Amen? Amen. With, when Jesus was with his disciples, all knowledge perfect because it's coming from the perfect Jesus. But it is when he goes that it becomes by, it becomes by gifts a word of knowledge, a word of uh, wisdom, a word of faith. That's gift now. Otherwise, when Jesus was here, which gift? Everything. Jesus is the perfect world. So, it tells us again, we have believed. You have believed. Amen? Yeah. Those who refuse to believe, some of them say it is not in scripture. Their eyes are blind towards the scripture. Can you see the scripture here? I took them to show them. Uh, the reason why I brought you to heaven is because I want you to see the beauty of heaven, the mansions of heaven, the angels of heaven, the partisans that are in heaven, how heaven is organized, so that you will go back and tell them that there is heaven, you have seen it. Those who are doubting shall doubt no more. They read it in scripture, but they're not, they are still doubting. When you say that, it will add to them. They will doubt no more. Uh, what am I saying? It's because 
we have believed. God has chosen us as a special people. A peculiar people. In the book of First Peter, chapter 2, First Peter chapter 2, I read from verse 9. Yes. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation. Holiness. One thing that characterizes holiness revival movement is holiness. Your leader is holy. The international director is holy. You hear me? Yeah. Yes, because you know there are some people that say, ah, look at who is holy but God alone. God also said we should be holy because he says, be ye holy as I am holy. So why are you leaving holiness to God alone? He makes holy. God makes people holy. The reason for this movement is holiness. You are clean. You are righteous. There's no sin in your life. That is what makes God very happy. No sin in your life. So, because we give ourselves to holiness, many of our of members of holiness revival movement are holy. If you are a sinner, you will think everybody is a sinner. You have stomach ache here. As you're holding your stomach, you're looking, okay, that man will have, I think that person is having stomach ache too. That person is having stomach ache. Who told you? It's because you are having stomach and you're squeezing your face. So you feel everybody that closes his face is having stomach ache. A sinner thinks everybody else is a sinner. To the impure, all things are pure. All things are impure. No. There are people in holiness revival movement that are holy. If you see sin in some, give them time. They shall soon join this holiness. Amen. Their life shall soon be cleansed. Amen. I'm telling you. If you see a sinner, well, Judas also was among Jesus' disciples. Was he holy? So, if anybody here is a sinner, his name is Judas. Otherwise, all the 11 people following Jesus, they were holy. Uh, they were true disciples. They were not, they didn't have demons. Have I not chosen you 12 and one of you is a devil? It's not everybody. So what am I saying? I'm saying so that maybe you see sin and somebody says, ah, they, they are all like that. They are not all like that. This place is holy. God has chosen this place for holiness. God chose our come ground to be a physical center where holiness is there. Of course, you can find somebody even there practicing sin. We have not seen him. Or his time has not come, for everything has its own time. And God, who could allow Judas with him, can allow any person. But that place is for holiness. If you are coming to conference in Abuja, have in mind, I am going to the holy temple. Amen? Amen. Holiness, a holy nation. That's what we are. A peculiar people. A peculiar people. Why peculiar? All churches are fumbling with sin. Or many churches are fumbling with sin. But we are not. Many have brought abominable practice among them. 
We have not. We have not. Many are allowing some kind of abominable dresses. We don't. No, we don't. We resist it. Worldwide, resist abominable dresses. Coordinators and leaders to the unit, resist it. Amen? Amen. That is what makes God happy. Happy is a place he can be. It's a place he can be because he loves holiness. A holy family is a family God will want to be there. It's giving him joy. You know, many the bushes are, are becoming cities. Otherwise, we who know about bush fire or bush burning, there is this RF bed, kite. Anywhere there is bush burning and there is smoke ascending to the air, what does the cat do? It will rush there and be flying. I like it. I like it. Have you noticed like that? Is that's how the spirit of God is? Wherever He sees holiness in a man, in a woman, in a family. In a church, he will be there. He will be sitting and laughing. He will be rejoicing. This is what I want. Is it difficult for you? One time we were praising God in the conference. In righteousness and joy. The Lord was so happy in a revelation. The Lord was so happy among us. He said, this is what I'm looking for. Which way is this difficult that you will give me this? Which way? We will give him 24 hours. 24-7. Holiness. 24-7. Holiness. In your life. In your family. In the church. In the chapter. In the unit in your business. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. That is it. In verse 10, the Bible speaks of us. No, verse 9 again, let's continue. That ye should show forth the praises of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The holiness you are living gives God praise. It makes him happy. He called you out of Egypt for it. He called you out of darkness for it. That is the reason he called you. Show my praise. Live the holy life before people. Satan, where are you coming from? I'm coming from me moving up and down to and fro on earth. Hey, when you were going up and down, did you see my servant Job? A holy man. That man has sin. That man loves righteousness. He hates iniquity. There's none like him in the earth. Others try, but Job has got ahead of them. See how God was pressing himself in Job. That is the reason. God shall press himself in my life. He shall press himself in holiness movement. Your people shall be all righteous. Through the word of God they would change and be holy. So, as I am passing here to Makodi, I am leaving holiness people behind. Amen. You who have not come in, join up quickly. As you are going home now, go and tell your neighbor, bye-bye. He said, bye-bye from what? He said, bye-bye from sin. All those quarreling, we have been quarreling, you won't see me again. 
You hear? He said, bye bye. When you go to work tomorrow, I mean, on, the, on Monday, you come, you say bye bye. Uh, you are sitting down, you say bye bye. Yes. Bye bye to all those dirty language we have been speaking in this office. I will never join it again. You hear me? You have left those things. You will not be there anymore. Please promise me you are going to do it in Jesus' name. Amen. Promise God that you are going to do so. Amen. That is what makes God happy. That is why God says, I have given to holiness movement the keys of the kingdom, the keys of end time revival. It's for holiness. You can't find it in any church. It's diminishing in many assemblies. But it is rising up here. I say it's rising up here. And it's spreading to all the world. Holiness. A peculiar people. Unto the Lord. People are surprised. How are you doing it? We say because we believe. You don't believe. We believe. You don't believe the messages of the Lord, but we believe. You don't believe the word of God, we believe. You don't believe the revelations of God, but we believe. And because we believe, so it is done unto us. That's why it's like that. That is it. Yes. Verse 10. Which in time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, who have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You were in Egypt before, but the Lord labored and brought you out of Egypt to himself. He labored. In fact, many of you were practically hallowed. Practically. Practical prostitutes. God labored. He labored for you to be who you are now. The Father labored. Jesus labored. The Holy Ghost labored. Even when you were in act of immorality, he was speaking to you. How long? I'm waiting for you. Stop those things. I'm waiting for you. Stop those things. Some will even say, leave me alone. Why are you disturbing my heart? Have you still God like that before? <laughs> you say, you shouted at him. Say, leave me alone. He didn't leave you. But see, today, you are a child of God. Today, your name is written in the book of life. Is the persistence of God. Now that you have come, he is showing you mercy. He has shown you love. Many are still going to hell. I get concerned constantly. I get concerned because of the people that are living in ignorance that hellfire is their portion. I looked at the Catholic Church say, hey, my God, what do we do? These are human beings. Ha! I look at the Lord of this church and say, my God, my God, what do I do? Hey? How do we handle these people? Not even to talk about Muslims. That one is behind the mountain. Uh -uh. What do we do? So, God, how do I do it? Paul said, I wish I were cursed for my people. So that they should replace me in the kingdom. Why are they missing it? I'm getting troubled. What do we do? It makes me, if I write this book, 
I think this will give them, if they read this book, they will be saved. After this, if I write this other one, I hope, you know, if I write this other, it, we are walking. Because we want the people to be saved. We want them to know this thing. We spread these materials free. We are doing what? We are doing all. When we spread, we hear like this. Has anybody caught the lips? Is anybody, has, uh, is anybody saved? Are we hearing voice of a, a, a saved soul somewhere? Huh? What happened? They're not talking. God. God. Well, they're not talking. They have not been saved. With all this effort we're making. But see you. Grace just made appear to you. And you have obtained mercy. You are in the right place. You are doing the right thing. You are believing the right doctrines. You found mercy. Keep it. And he continued. He said, dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lust which war against the soul. I beg you, now that you have known the truth, now, don't go back to these things again. Don't go back to immorality again. Don't go back to witchcraft, collecting charm, doing these things again. Don't go back to telling lies again. I am begging. Why? God saved you. Don't go back to fighting again. Shouting and behaving proudly. Don't go back to this dirty dressing. Don't. God saved you. He labored over you and saved you from the pit. You want to go and fall back inside. Don't do that. Come. When you are fetching water from somewhere and pouring some want to go back into the pit. You are trying to block it. Is that not so? You want to block. I'm fetching the one that is there. And you are pouring. But how long will I be doing this? I'm blocking it. The Lord is blocking you. Don't go to sin. How long will he be doing it? He saved you. You are going to back. Going back. He has other people to save. Don't go back to sin anymore. Don't go back to your vomit anymore. Be clean. Be righteous. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles. That whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they mean by your good works, which they shall behold, glorify God in the day of visitation. The people, sufficient is that you are in righteousness and people are abusing you. <laughs> uh, uh, the Indian man that came for, to our conference in the camp he is in Abuja he came at holiness revival movement somebody gave him this book uh, Jesus revelation on top church founders in our day and testimonies of men and angels on divine choice of Pastor Paul Rica. When he read that, he called me and asked me a question. He said, I agree with all that is written in the book, but I, there's something I didn't agree. What is that? How would they say you are savior? I said, myself? No. There is capital A savior. There is small a savior. Amen? Jesus is the universal savior that God has given to man. We who come to him and have received the message to spread to various people, we are smaller saviors. Is that clear? It's just like Jesus is the Christ. We are what? Christians, little Christ. Hey, how will you compare me with my Lord? 
my God, my King, my Redeemer, my Creator. He said, now I'm okay. I will be coming for your conference. <laughs> Praise the Lord. And when he is, he has been known, to, uh, he's a very well-known man to Khan and PFM, Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria in Abuja. So the preachers, the, uh, the pastors then know him, a Christian Association of Nigeria. So when he talked about coming to my place, he said, don't go, that man is preaching heresy. Eh? Myself? He said, then the church should not come there because you're preaching heresy. So, he came. If you who are there, you know, he sat in the front seat to see everything. <laughs> he will want to see everything going on there. Let's see the heresy. Because he is himself a professor. He's, he owns Bible, Bible school. He's running a Bible school. So let us watch. And that man got lost in Christ. He had never seen a preacher like that. He had never seen. The man now is a member of Holiness Revival. <laughs> <laughs> That's what the Bible says. Having your conversation honest among the Gentiles that whereas they speak against you as being evil doers, they mean by your good works, which they shall behold glorify God in the day of visitation. Visitation. They will see actual nothing evil. They speak evil. This one says he's like that. This one says he's like that. But when they come, they won't see anything. The prince of this world cometh, but see, findeth nothing in me. Which of you convinced me of sin? Then why don't you believe what I have said? So, people, we are a peculiar people. God has called us to do something special. For your information, revival is coming in the world. And this revival is coming through Holiness Revival Movement. We have made up our minds. We are ready for it. We have started prayers. We started it. We are in three days fasting in Abuja. We shall finish our fasting tomorrow. After that, northeast, northeastern states will, will, will take over. After that, I think south, south, south states will take over. Revival must come. Yeah. What Jesus came and spoke, which we know is true, disqualifying these churches, and it is perfect truth, and saying, I raise you up, holiness movement, I have introduced you to the churches. Move. We are moving. Yeah. I say we are moving. Yeah. Holiness. Yeah. Everybody say holiness. 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 The world will be filled with it. Yeah. Christianity will be revived. Yeah. Spread those books. Spread the messages. Do all. Let's save the people. But keep your salvation. Let's rise up upon our feet. Let's worship the Lord. Let's thank the Lord. Worship the Lord. Holy Lord. We are to live holy Lord. Holy Lamb, we are to live holy Lamb. I live holy as example of the holy life, the holy life, the holy Lamb. Holy Lamb, we are to live holy Lamb. Holy Lamb, we are to live holy Lamb. We must live holy as example 
of the holy life, the holy life, the holy life. Be ye holy, holy life. You are to live holy life. Be ye holy, holy life. You are to live holy life. You must live holy as example of the holy life. The holy life. The holy life. You must live holy as example of the holy life. The holy life. The holy life. I live holy as example of the holy life. The holy life. The holy life. Be a holy, holy life. We are to live holy life. Be ye holy, holy life. We are to live holy life. We must live holy as example of the holy life. The holy life. The holy life. We must live holy as example of the holy life. The holy life. The Holy Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. The message you have just listened to is a production of Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide. Holiness Revival Movement Worldwide is a non denominational ministry that is given to the propagation of Christ's righteousness and holiness in churches and nations of the world through crusades, revival meetings, production and spread of holiness literature and materials. For other spiritual materials, messages or inquiries, contact us on 0816 902 Three nine four eight O zero eight zero five six eight three four three two three. You can also reach us through our email address Holiness Revival Movement at Gmail dot com. God bless you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Hallelujah. Jesus, I believe in you. You are my
believe in you. You are the living Savior. I believe in you. I love you, Lord. I love you. I believe. I believe, I believe. 